you have studied uh, the reflection of light in smaller classes. Before we proceed further, we have to understand what is light. Why do we see things? And why do we see things in light? And why do we not see anything when it is dark? Now, light is nothing but electromagnetic waves. These waves are sinusoidal in nature and they travel in a straight line. Now, when they travel in a straight line, the direction of the movement of the wave is called as a ray. A single ray does not exist. A beam of rays is just a collection in a particular direction. The beam can be diverging or it can be converging or it can be parallel or it may not follow any of these particular patterns. Now, when this light from a source falls on a body which you want to see, for example, you want to see this lid. First thing is that the light has to from some external source has to fall on it or it can be luminous. So, if it is a candle, no problem, but if it is something which is not giving out its own light, it is non-luminous. In that case, light from some other source has to fall on it. That light will be reflected by this. It will reach my eyes and I would make an image by the lens of the eyes on the retina and I will see the object. So, the light rays have to ultimately start from an object for us to see the object. That is how we see the things when they are visible. And if it is in a dark room, then though no, no light falls on it, no light is reflected and therefore nothing enters your eyes and the, nothing makes an image and therefore you do not see the object. Now, light mostly travels in a straight line. In some special cases, it changes its direction which we will discuss little later. Now, the reflection of light that you have studied earlier was always from plane surfaces. Suppose this is a mirror. Remember, a mirror is always shaded on one side and that side shows the painted side of the glass piece. The polished side is the remaining side. Therefore, if the light falls from this angle and from this direction, it will not be reflected by this mirror in the traditional sense. Only if falls, if it falls on the polished side, then it will be reflected as you have studied. It will be reflected to follow some laws of reflection. This is the point of incident, if you have, if you remember rightly. This is the incident ray. At the point of incidence, you draw a normal. You measure this angle, you call this angle as angle of incidence. You make an equal angle on, in the other direction. In the same plane, the plane which is made by the normal and the incident ray, that plane will will have the reflected ray also, such that the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are same. So, these are the two laws of reflection, that angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal. Secondly, the incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray will lie in the same plane always. And the reflected ray is on the other side of the normal, looking at the reflected incident ray. Now, these laws are very important and first thing that you have to remember is that they are always valid, they are always followed. Whatever reflection you are talking about, whether it is from plane mirror or from any other kind of mirror, these laws will always, always be followed. Okay? So, that we should keep it in mind. Now, what we are going to do today is we are going to discuss the mirrors which are not plane mirrors. So, they are shiny surfaces, they are shiny surfaces but they are curved in nature. Now, how is that possible? Right? Suppose you have a hollow sphere and you uh, paint the outside of it and you polish the inside of it, and some mercury oxide power polish is there and you take a part of it. Okay? So, we consider a part of it. You may consider this part or you may consider this part. So, you realize that if the light comes from here, it will not, not, not be reflected properly. It will not be regular reflection, but if light falls from here, it will be reflected nice and proper in a particular direction and we will call it regular reflection. 
So, this kind of mirror which is a part of a sphere is called spherical mirror and we are going to discuss the reflection from spherical mirrors today. Now, there are two kinds of mirrors. This is as you can see one, it is turned inside, its polished side is facing the center of the sphere. The center of the sphere is not on the mirror, but it is the curved side, the polished side is facing the center and such mirrors are called as concave mirrors. On the other hand, if you look at this kind of mirror, again light falling from here will not be reflected in a uniform manner, but if it falls this side on the polished side, then it will reflect in a regular direction, showing you the regular reflection and this kind of mirror is by the way also going to be called as concave. Because you really see there is no difference between this and this. You just turn it like this and this these are the same things. So, if I am talking about the other kind, then what does that look like? The other kind of mirror is like this. See what I am showing. It is a part of sphere on this side. The center of the sphere would be here, but the light is not going to come from towards the, the center side. The light is come from the other side if you want it to be reflected properly, then it has to come from this side and this kind of mirror is called as convex mirror. So, we are going to talk about these two kinds of mirrors today and we will see that the characteristics of the image that we had earlier, let us go back there. In the plane mirror, in the plane mirrors, what did you have the characteristics? You had the image same size as the object right. You always see when you look at yourself in the mirror, you see the image which is exactly your size. The image distance is equal to the object distance, meaning this you cannot see from a mirror, but if you are say 1 meter from the mirror, then rest assured that the image, your image in the mirror would be 1 meter behind it. Okay. So, it is the distances are equal. Third thing is that it is a, it's a virtual image. You, you cannot catch it. The rays do not may exactly meet at a point, intersect at a point to make the image. It is a virtual image. You cannot catch it on a screen. You see it all right, but it cannot be caught on a screen. So, it is a virtual image and therefore, it is erect. It is not inverted. And, and fourth is that it is laterally inverted. Laterally inverted. Now, what does that mean? It means that if this is a plane mirror that I am talking about, should the object be on this side? No, it should be on this side, right? If you want it to show proper reflection. If I am looking at small p, say, then it will look like if this is the object, then the image will be right here, equidistant, and I will have I will have the image as q. So, this kind of image is called lateral inverted. So, these are said to be the characteristics of reflection from a plane mirror. 